This is the Sunny Mountain Patterns Coral and Wave Sailor Collar Short and Long Sleeve Tops. This is the long sleeve version, and you wait until you see the back. It is so stinking cute. So first we're going to attach the shoulders for the bodice. You have to do both left and right sides. Right side, correct sides, right sides together, not right as in the side. Oh. As in the pattern piece that's going to face outwards. Uh, at 3 eighths of an inch, seam allowance or one centimeter. So, you know, forward and backwards stitch both sides. Then we're going to sew the collar to the lining. The light blue is the lining and the dark blue is the collar itself. We're going to put the right sides together and then just pin it together. We're going to sew along the outer perimeter. You will notice the pattern has an inner stitch line. That's generally what we're going to follow because it comes to a V. So when we start stitching on the free ends or the, the, the thin ends, we're going to start about three eighths of an inch down. And then I put the needle down, I think right about there. So then when I pivot, the needle stays down and it keeps the fabric in place. And you just pivot around the needle. This is again, three eighths of an inch, same allowance. And then I'm going to trim it to one fourth. This way I can make sure I have definitely caught all the edges. Did I, I think I might've gone a little too far in that one, but make sure you <laughs> stop three eighths of an inch before. So we're gonna clip the curves. This involves uh, trimming, which I have already done. And then we're trimming the corners, actually not really the curves. I used the wrong title card for this. And then we're gonna turn it right side out. You can use uh, your scissors very carefully <laughs> or uh, rounded chopsticks work well or some of those fancy turning tools. Now we have to press. This is very important, don't skip the step. You need to press this in place so that it doesn't curl up. Uh, if you want to, I highly recommend top stitching the outer ends um, from the, the right side of the outside fabric just to keep it in place so you know when it go, goes to the laundry it'll stay in place. Half of the work is just pressing things with a hot iron. We're gonna baste the collar to the neckline. You can use the longest stitch you have. We're gonna baste at a quarter of an inch from the end. You just wanna make sure we tack it down. It makes it a little easier to deal with than trying to deal with three layers. So here you can see I put the notches. The center notch goes to the center. And then there's shoulder notches that need to match up with the shoulder seam. I clip it instead of making notches because it also helps it fit around the collar. So in this case, we're going to put a one inch wide bias. This is self-biasing tape. You can use pre-made ones and we're just gonna bend it around. You might have to clip it a little bit if it's really stiff, if you don't have a super flexible material or stretchy material. Like, this is supposed to be woven, but there's different levels of woven and stretchiness when you use bias especially. That's why it's hard to tell you exactly how much bias tape you need. And once I get to the end, I just trim off the excess. You can, of course, use pre-made uh, single or double fold. And here I have three eighths of an inch seam allowance or one centimeter. Just to make sure I've caught all of the layers. And again, remember I did a, a quarter inch basting for the sailor collar. So that should get caught up in this seam allowance. You just go all the way around, uh, making sure that you haven't caught up the, the bodice into us because I did that once and I had to take it all out and redo it. So we're going to trim the excess because it's going to be really hard to flip it over with all that extra excess. I just do wide seam allowances to, to make sure I've caught all of the edges. You can, of course, if you're really good and you're very confident in your skills, do a quarter inch and not bother with the trimming. You'll just have a slightly wider uh, bias tape. I am not that confident in my skills, so I shall do three eighths and trim. Also, don't don't trim your sewing. So now we're gonna fold over towards the inside or the wrong side and tuck under about a quarter of an inch. You are welcome to iron this here or press with a hot iron. Uh, please press your seams, your shoulder seams outwards. I did not do that. It just makes it have less bulk and sits nicely. If you're wondering, that's my, what, the only type of pinking shears I have, but that helps to keep it from fraying. You can, of course, finish your seams other ways, such as zigzag or on a overlocker or a serger before you go ahead and do this. 
Now, usually if that's the case, you can't you can't press it open if you use overlocker. That's okay. So they're all tucked over. We're gonna sew. Now we're using regular a uh, regular stitch and just sewing close to that folded edge. Make sure that it's all caught up underneath because you don't want that little thing sticking out later. That ruins the effect of being professional looking. And just tuck it over and go all the way around. Make sure you've caught it. And it's gonna look super professional. So now we have to do the sleeves. We're gonna gather the shoulder clamps with basic stitches, which is the longest stitch you can get. We do not forward and back stitch because we want to be able to pull it out. And you leave a little long tail. See how that? And you pull, and you pull the the uh, bobbin thread a little bit, and you um, start scrunching up the fabric. I believe that's the technical term. So here I'm going to match up the center of the sleeve with the um, the shoulder seam, and then the ends, and then we're gonna we're gonna start uh, distributing the folds. I'm sorry, the gathers. You can, of course, instead of doing this, uh, you can do the same basting stitch without thread in and hold the back with your finger very carefully so that scrunches up and causes folds. I have actually really been liking this because then you don't have to take out the um, you don't have to take out the basting stitches and it's a little it's a little less bulky to deal with. But you can see here how I'm distributing it out. It really doesn't need a whole lot of ease for this design. Uh, if you want the basting to be all together, then go right ahead. I just didn't design it that way and I, I didn't sew it that way. So now we're going to stitch it. This is going to be regular stitches, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I use perpendicular um, needles because for curves that helps keep it in place. So make sure that you have not caught the bodice underneath underneath the stitching because you will be super mad. You just did all this work and then you have to undo it because the bodice is all caught up. Yep, there's the sleeve. And you can finish this if you want. Oh my goodness, my husband's coughing, I'm sorry. <sighs> He's got allergies. So if you want, you can go ahead and, um, I fix the seam, but first pull out the the basing thread. Do not pull out this, the stitching line. You will be so mad. I've done that before. I think this is my second try. I did it the first time. So we're going to hem the sleeve before we go on, before we sew up the side. So just fold it over double about half an inch or more if you need, if you have shorter arms. I mean, if your kid has shorter arms. If you want a super professional finish, do not sew all the way from the beginning to end. Start about an inch to an inch and a half from and end an inch to an inch and a half. That way you can roll down one of the folds, sew the, sew the sides and then roll it back up and finish sewing. So now we're gonna sew the side seam. So you see here, I flipped open one of the, um, one of the folds. It's perfectly acceptable to just sew it straight. That's okay too. Sometimes you're busy. So here we're gonna move the um, the shoulder seam down towards the bodice and then sew all the way down. Pretty much done, you just need to finish the seams. So like the side seams, these are the options. You can do flat foul, zigzag, etc. Oh, the button placket. We're not almost done. Here's two different methods. This is the first method, quick and dirty. So you just, you fold over uh, the top end. See there? And you fold it in half and you just attach it to the right sides. I apologize. I bumped the, I bumped the camera. And we're just going to sew straight down. This is right side to right side. And then you see the fold over right over the, um, right over the collar. We'll flip it over. I already finished the ends here and you're gonna to top stitch the end towards the bodice. This is the second method, professional looking fillers. So this is right side to wrong side, right side of the button placket to the wrong side. Three eighths of an inch. 
I folded, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that, fold a half inch on the top and then fold over and then fold another half inch and fold in half. You want to make sure the seam is folded towards the button placket, like so. And then, and then stitch it down. This way you have the nice stitching that shows out on the outside. So this one you want to be right where that fold is so you catch all of the all of the fabric. You do it both sides. And then we're going to hem the bottom. Again, it's similar to the sleeve hem where you just do the double fold, have half an inch if you have a slightly shorter torso, which this is pretty short. It says you can do a little bit longer. You can do a quarter inch if you have a slightly, sh if you need a longer torso. Then you add buttonholes and snaps like that. And that was the tutorial. This is from Sunny Mountain Patterns. Uh, it's an Etsy shop. It's Sunny Mountain Pattern on Etsy. Thank you.